Hi, my name is Rich Harlan, the owner of Hazardous Materials Institute, also known as HMI. We provide safety training for industrial workers and first responders. I'm here today to talk to you about uh, electric vehicles. Um, I have a passion for vehicles and I know there are some concerns out there with electric vehicles that I want to talk to some folks about and you might get in this situation and it might help you someday. So we're going to talk about electric cars, the history of electric cars, uh, the reason electric cars are becoming more popular, um, EV fires, EV stands for electric vehicles, uh, safety of the new cars, and the um, charging stations for some of these. So as we move along here, I'll first talk about the electric car. The electric car is not new. It's been around since the late 1800s. It used to be used, it was more popular than the gasoline vehicles back in the day, and they were used to go about a mile, and they had to go and get a new battery changed out. They were about a 12 volt battery like we have in cars today, but they were uh, you could get about a mile of travel in them, so they weren't very popular for that. In uh, 1908, Henry Ford came out with a Model T, which was a gasoline engine where you had to crank it. A few years after that, uh, the electric starter came into play, which made the gasoline engine much more user-friendly because you could travel further with it, fuel it up, and, um, and move on your way. About that time, America was getting more roads and more distances were uh, becoming more popular, people wanted to travel for further distances, so that's how the gasoline vehicle came into play. Um, now we are moving back into the electric vehicles. Back in uh, 1908, the Model T was $650, and for an electric car, it was $1,750. So you can see there were some price changes there as well. Uh, as we move on, I'm going to talk a lot about the Tesla vehicle. The reason why I'm going to talk about Tesla the most is because there are about 3 million of them on the road today. There are only about less than uh, a million of all the other vehicles, all the other manufacturers that have built the electric car. So Tesla is by far uh, the majority of them, so I'm going to talk pretty much about them. So we have the Tesla car. It's a 480 volt AC system uh, that, that charges on it. It will charge when you go to what's called the super station. It will charge your vehicle up to 80% of the capacity of the battery within 15 minutes, pretty fast. Um, it costs $5 to give you uh, 100 miles. Now that varies if you're going 100 miles an hour and the car obviously is going to burn more electricity. When you have an electric motor, when they're designed for a certain RPM, they're very efficient. However, when you start to spin them up faster, they become much less efficient. So you could go through that, you could maybe only get 50 miles on it if you're going 100 miles per hour. So uh, there are some really good tax breaks with these now in 2023 that just started up. They used to happen before and now they are back for all manufacturers. The first one is the state tax. The state tax of California is uh, $2,500 right off the top. And then uh, you also get a federal tax rebate of $7,500. That comes right off the top. So now if you go to buy one of those vehicles, and let's say that vehicle is $50,000, it drops that right off the top and you are now down $10,000, so you're paying $40,000 for that electric vehicle. Uh, and then also your utility bills at your home, because you're using an electric vehicle, they drop down. So for instance, if your utility rate was 32 cents per kilowatt uh, before you had an electric car, when you get an electric car, it drops down to like 28 cents per kilowatt. So it comes a little bit cheaper and that happens all day long. You also get a better rate when you charge your vehicle at night. So what you can do is you can program your car to charge at 12 o'clock at night. So it'll be charged up by the morning. Some of the benefits of the electric car is there isn't a lot of maintenance to it. So the brakes are, are averaging that need to be replaced averagely about every three to 400,000 miles. The reason why is when you let off the gas, it regenerates electricity. The electric engines or the electric motors reverse polarity and it creates resistance so it slows the vehicle down. You don't actually have to apply the brakes unless you're having an emergency or you're going less than five miles an hour. So it's a big benefit for maintenance on the braking system and things like that. It has no transmission. It has no real engine that needs to be maintained. There's no spark plugs. There's no fan belts. There's no um, anything like that needs to be fuel injection systems. There's none of that stuff that has to happen. Um, one of the neat things about it is it doesn't have to warm up. You hop in the car and you go. The heaters kick on. You can turn your air conditioner on before you even get into it. Uh, some of the fancier ones even have sensors. When you walk up to it, it will turn on the air conditioner or it will create the climate inside the car for you to be 70 degrees or whatever you want it at. 
Uh, some of the other neat things about it is it is made of aluminum and we're talking about the Tesla is made of aluminum. So with that, it created, when they developed this car, it created a five-star safety system on it when they crash it. The reason is aluminum is very predictable. You can take a Pepsi can and you can stand on the top of it and tap it in the middle and it'll crush down. It almost always does it the same way. It's very predictable. They have lots of airbags inside of them. Uh, they have a, uh, accident avoidance, which is huge. It will actually avoid a vehicle accident. It will stop. It will do everything without you even touching uh, the brakes. It will actually stop for you. Uh, it has 360 cameras on it, which is pretty nice. It also helps if you get in a vehicle accident, PD can come along and pull those records up and find out if you were actually at fault or not. It could help you or hurt you, depending on how it goes. Um, in America, uh, there, are, oh, there is a fire every, how many is it? Uh, every two minutes. And uh, so it's quite often there's a, there's a car fire. Uh, there are over 172,000 car fires every year. For Teslas, the statistics show that there are 25 cars that are destroyed uh, after every 100,000 are made. So it's like a quarter of a percent. It's a very small percentage of these that are, that are actually burning up. The 40% of the car, the electric cars that do have fires are happening when they're being charged. So that is a risk. So the biggest thing we need to do if we do have a car fire inside a house, inside a garage is we want to turn the power off so we can actually touch that car and get rid of that AC current. I'm going to get in a little bit more of that in a minute, but you're going to want to shut the breakers down if you respond to something like this. The other thing that I thought of is if, if um, I'm on electric car fire, I'm going to pull the car out of the garage. Uh, I think that we all know that these things are going to need a lot of water to put them out. You've got to get the car out of the garage. So tie a chain to your engine, whatever you got to do, pull that thing out and get it out of there. Uh, these car fires, they have the, the Tesla batteries have these burst, burst discs on the sides. And when the burst discs blow, they will in, in a parking lot, they're gonna, they're, you're gonna get a chain reaction. You're gonna get exposures. You're gonna get other cars on fire. So you're gonna need to remove that car out of the way however you can, I think is the best way. Uh, or water curtains or remove the other cars or whatever. These things, act, act, after they have their fires, they will self-ignite again within like a 24-hour period. So even if it goes to a junkyard, it has to be in an area where there's 50 feet around the full perimeter because they do self-ignite again. Um, one of the things they do do over in Europe is they actually have these dumpsters that they have and they actually take the car and they dump it inside the dumpster with water in it and let it sit there and it just cools it down and and it'll just settle down overnight. You can also bury the car. Now these are not very easily things to do, but this is how we're dealing with it at this point in time. Question, an electric vehicle, if you have a Tesla and you pull up and you see this and you see that somebody's inside of it, are you gonna jump in that water? Will you be electrocuted? The answer is no, you will not be electrocuted. The reason is, it is DC, and I'm going to talk about that. So we're going to kick right into AC first of all. So we have AC, it's alternating current. It's always looking to go to a ground. It's looking for the least of path, re path resistance. So in other words, if we touch electric wire, it comes down, it goes through our bodies, it goes to the ground. Least of path resistance is what it's looking for. So you think about a bird. A bird is on a, um, on a wire and it doesn't get electrocuted up on a telephone pole. The reason why it's not grounded. If it touched the ground or it touched a different current that was next to it with its other foot, it, the electricity would go through it and it would electrocute itself. If it's the same current, it will not electrocute you. This is a really good video I wanna show you here, so we're gonna sit and watch this. And empowers this white knight on a quest to keep the juice flowing. I don't give two hoots and a holler about flying inside a helicopter. Put me outside. That's where I want to be. On a magic carpet. the name of Michael Faraday. He had a theory that if you enclosed a man in a metal cage and energized that cage at whatever voltage, the man would still live. The voltage would 
floor around you. I wear a hot suit. It's uh, 75% Nomex for fire retardant and 25% stainless steel thread. And that metal thread means I have a Faraday cage around me. Half a million volts pass over my body, but I can work without interference from the electricity. As long as the helicopter is isolated from the ground, we have the ability to bring ourselves to the same voltage potential as the line. But the bird on the wire. The pilots are very smooth. It's like I can read our every thought. There's such a hunger for electricity these days. Nobody wants to take lines out of service just to maintain them. think what you do is safe. And I say, well, in our operation, everything that we do, every move that we make is thought of and rehearsed before, so it's as safe as crossing the street. It's not a job for a hot dog. There's only three things I've ever been afraid of. Electricity, Heights and women. And I'm married too. Talk about a high risk job. So we talk about how he became one with the current. He wasn't electrocuted because he wasn't grounded. Picture here you can see in PowerPoint is it's going to a ground. All of our houses have this. When a breaker pops, the electricity goes to the ground. This is AC current. We're talking about DC current when we talk about an electric vehicle now. This is a battery. So we have a battery. The current flows through the battery, lights up the light bulb. Whatever's not used goes back to the battery. It's always looking to go back to the battery. It's not looking to go to a ground so it won't electrocute you. Also, if the, bat if the uh, light is not on, if the switch is not on, there is no current being run through it. So you wouldn't even be electrocuted even if you were in interrupted in it. But if there was something being flown through it, it would, um, it, it would, uh, could potentially electrocute you. But in this case with a car, it's not doing anything. You're not touching both sides of the wires. You will not be electrocuted. The batteries in these things are like AA batteries. There's thousands of them in there. They look just like these, and uh, there's thousands of them in there. What happens when they catch on fire is they have a chain reaction because they're inside a box. And you can see that box there. It's a high voltage box and uh, it has a chain reaction, just ignites them all off. They're really hard to cool down because they're inside that box, but then they're inside another box that uh, will hold them all together if they do get hit. They've been tested by hitting trains, all kinds of different impacts, and most of the time they stay together pretty well. Identifiers, you're gonna find some sort of identifier on it that says it's an electric car, that it's a hybrid car, whatever it might be. You can see Toyota uses blue for their Prius. Um, you're gonna see different colors, different branding, but the federal law says that you have to have some sort of an identifier on all of your vehicles that are a different than just regular fuel. Some of the ways you can disable the, the electric vehicle is to turn off the ignition, uh, turn, off, turn, off, turn on the emergency flashers, and uh, pull any accessories out of if anything's charging, if you have your cell phone or anything like that, you need to get those out of there. One of the other things you need to do is you need to take your key fob. Let's say this is a key fob. It needs to be at least 16 feet away from the car. Otherwise, the car can move. They could hit their foot on the gas pedal and it could take off. So you need to get that key out of the way. And this is for all cars nowadays, anything that has a key fob. Uh, shutdown. You can also shut them down by cutting the 12 volt battery or there's a disconnect generally in the trunk somewhere that you can get a hold of it and uh, get rid of it. Collision forces, so an object in motion stays in motion unless acted upon by an equal or greater force. Well, if you're not wearing your seatbelt and the people in the back seat decide to come forward on you, that's a equal or greater force, right? 
some of the cars. So our cars are much safer than they were 10 years ago. If you notice, years ago for the older folks that have been around for a while, you pull up to a vehicle accident 20 years ago and the car didn't have a lot of damage to it, people would be dead inside. Nowadays, you pull up to a vehicle, you see major accidents like this, cars completely destroyed, they walk away. It's because of the airbags, it's because of the different sort of um, materials that they're using, the aluminum, uh, like we were talking about, they're able to predict the crush zones. Um, here's a full aluminum body, they're a lot lighter as well, uh, so you don't have as much mass. Some of the other things that they're doing is they're doing some telescoping um, framework where there's sort of the, there's a smaller one that goes inside of a bigger one and they sort of crush together. That reduces the, um, the downtime when, you, when you're slowing down in your body. So it's easier for your body to uh, live off of that. That's it. I'd like to thank you for your time. If you'd like to come and see anything on my website, come and see hmitraining.com. Once again, my, my name is Rich Harlan with Hazardous Materials Institute, and thanks for watching.